Cancel it within 30 days, you won't get charged. So far, every, nobody whom I spoke to and suggested that actually canceled it. I still yet to hear somebody call me and said, yeah, didn't like it, canceled. Um, it's only 10 US dollars per month, but once people, who's using Copilot here? Would you cancel an individual subscription? Uh, no. no. Can't be, just too much effort, man. Yeah. Uh, it's the way I usually pitch it, not that I'm pitching it to, to sell, but the way I pitch it to businesses, they come and say, well, we need to evaluate, we need to do the case study, we need to design use cases, bring a team of developers to run those use cases. I'm like, guys, $19 per month. $19 per month converts to about 10 to 20 minutes of your developer time per month. As long as I save your developer 20 minutes per month, you already got back your $19. Why don't you just enable it for everybody and just see at the end of the month who's not using it? Whoever not using it, yeah, just disable it because you're wasting money. But those who are actually using it, I can guarantee you that it will save more than 20 minutes. How much time those who are using it, Copilot saves you per month? Hmm? Half an hour of looking to boring documentation, but most of it. Yeah. yeah. So go and try it with individuals. Go and try it. it it's fun. Um, the rest of the stuff I have is really about companies. You probably won't be interested. Um, if it's on business, if it's compiled for business, it actually comes with some legalities and uh, top level management how you can apply settings. So it's more applicable to enterprises. Um, so I won't go through that. Um, so here is the interesting part. Um, what you get today is what we call um, code suggestion. So pretty much you type, it types, you accept in a nutshell. But what GitHub is doing is they are trying to build AI into every single stage of uh, development workflow in every area. If you heard of this Copilot, who heard of Copilot X? Thank you, because it was a major disaster, marketing disaster. When they announced Copilot X, I started getting calls saying, well, I don't want Copilot, I want Copilot X. I'm like, guys, this is not even a product. It's just a vision with marketing created. It's not a product, you can't buy it. What it is, think about it as labs. What we do is with AI, we have a kitchen cooking something here. Once in a while, we tell you we are cooking this, but we are not ready to bring it out yet but we are telling you we're cooking. That's Copilot X. Um, and examples of what it can do is something like this. What is this regex thing? How many speak regex? Not me. Explain selective code. It's thinking and does, yeah, it's a regex expression. It's about that, it's about that. Here's what it does. Um, or similarly, actually, you know what? Why not? Let me open something. Uh, open folder. Let's see, what do I have here? I don't know what's compiler text. Let's open that. Yeah, like for example, this one. It's in beta, by the way. Explain. So it actually will explain what this part of code does. Um, or, actually, you know what? Let's go back to my webinar thing. Hold on a sec. Let me show you something interesting. So let me close that. And let me, so what I want to do, I have, um, Converter between Celsius and Fahrenheit, right? What I want to do is create a function to convert between Celsius 
Fahrenheit and Kelvin. Okay, again, this is how AI works. In previous examples, it actually gave me just one function with a lot of case or ifs. Here it created a bunch of separate ones. Fine, works for me. That's fine, I'll do that. Um, what I can also do is, I can do rewrite this to work for any scale. Aha, uh -huh. you see? Maybe not as pretty. Yeah, maybe not as pretty as before. In the past, it was giving me better options. But I can do that now. I can just tell a pilot in English what I want to create, and it will do it. Um, I can convert this to COBOL. Here we go. So technically, you can highlight the whole COBOL file, convert to Python, boom, and it's done. How much time do you take? It takes you to actually get developer to manually rewrite COBOL to Python, probably way longer than that. So that's in terms of, think of chat GPT in your ID, or if it's documentation, uh, like somebody wants to ban Andre from my organization, straight away it goes, it finds relevant documentation and actually gives you a nicely written answer. Or, this is a interesting one, I hate writing pull request descriptions. Uh, I do a fair bit of changes in documentation and my view is like, just open it, it's duh, it's all there. But for something more complicated, probably you need to write more. So what if you get a pilot who will go into your code, analyze what you've done, and actually write the whole pull request description for you in English? Oh, I didn't delete that one. Okay, good. How much time will it take you to write a, something like that? Yeah, command line, Linux command line. For me, it will, um, Raise your hand, it will take you less than two minutes. Less than 10 minutes? Less than an hour with Google. Yeah, that's me. Less than an hour with Google, that's me. Now, watch. So that's Copilot for CLI. That's something that's cooking in the back at the moment. Um, you just say, this is what I want. Like, no, 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 I won't actually do a revision. Exclude text, test files. Rendering console commands is really annoying. You have to like search all the time onto Stack Overflow again and yep. again on the same question. Yep. Now you just search yep. and yeah, yep. it just gets yep. through. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it makes it easier, man. Execute? Honestly. Yep. Found it. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, one last thing. Well, if you thought it was about all copilot and code spaces, no, it's a, actually a sale, sales code. So if you want to come fly gliders, <laughs> let me know. I'll take you up. But yeah, those two uh, QR codes have a bunch of links about copilot code spaces. So any questions? Yep. I have a question about Stack Overflow. So recently their uh, direct search volume has mm -hmm. just been absolutely decimated. Like 60% of the searches are gone now. And they're all being re-diverted to something like Copilot or like ChatGPT. How do you feel about that for Stack Overflow? Well, <laughs> you should ask Stack Overflow. <laughs> How do you feel that you're taking the traffic away from them? If my view, if it helps developers, mm -hmm. I don't feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way I explain Copilot is um, 
it's a tool which will not replace a developer, but it's a tool which shortens the time your developer spends on Stack Overflow. By a massive amount. <laughs> By massive amount. Like in the past, you, you stuck, you go to Stack Overflow, you search, you spend two hours. Or you you can't find it. Yeah. You ask. Then you wait half a day or a day before the first stupid reply. You clarify. <laughs> then you, in a week, you get the answer. Yeah. Most of the answers are people berating your face or everything. Right? Yeah. It's very, very high. <laughs> yeah. yep. Yes? What's the uptake of uh, co-pilots? Is it exponential? Like, is it still exponential? Uh, we started, we opened it in about a year ago. Uh, we have 1.5 million people using it it's today. Yep. today. Okay. Yep. When you first opened it, how many, like, hmm? what's the growth? Is it like, over a year, is it 1.5? It's, it's not exponential, but it's, uh, at the beginning there was a big jump. And now it's like a, it's a steady growth. It's more like that. It's that's for individuals. For enterprise, it is exponential at the moment. Because what's happening with enterprises, a lot of companies are a bit scared. AI legalities. Who owns the code? Will I get sued? Uh, will my get code go get get into the model? Oh, how many times I get that question? Um, um, so a lot of enterprises are slow. They want to do their due diligence, understand how it works. On top of that, um, have you ever seen developer talking to a lawyer? <laughs> and that's what needs to happen in order for enterprise give a green tick for copilot. Yeah. So once we pass that, once the company understand it, it's like goes. Very big. Yes? Yeah, uh, the code uh, I'm writing with the comparator. Does the comparator will learn from what I write? And then it will show my results, my development to other developers. So what happens? <laughs> what happens? Let me clarify here. Yeah. Um, so your code yeah. is a context, so which includes your code. Yes. We collect two types of data. First, we collect what we call prompt, that's your code. And we collect what's called user engagement data. I'll explain a bit later. So your code gets sent to the model. The model is hosted on Azure infrastructure. It's on our infrastructure. Your code doesn't go anywhere. Um, it gets thrown into this model, which we host. It spits out the suggestion. Once we send suggestion to your IDE, yeah. everything that model generated, it gets discarded. Your prompt gets discarded. So as soon as we generate suggestions, that's all gone. So there it's is no not, not even it's not even stored anywhere. It's all in oh. memory, so it doesn't go anywhere. The only time when it can go somewhere is on Copilot for individual license. In your settings, there is one which says, allow GitHub to keep my code for, to train the model. Okay. If you say yes, please, we might keep it, okay. and we later may use it to train the model. Okay. If you disable it, as soon as we spit out, spit out the project, uh, suggestion, it's, it's gone, it's, it's deleted. We actually don't even know which suggestion you accept. Once it's sent, we drop everything, everything else is happening here. We don't even know. We don't even know if you, out of 10, which you accepted, or whether you accepted any. We don't know. Um, the other type of data which we collect, called user engagement data, that's nothing to do with your code. It's more about statistics and metrics, like how long time does it take, did it take to send and receive? How long did it take for you for suggestion to appear versus for you to act on it. So it's more about for us to gather metrics to see what works, what doesn't, what's slow, where the problems are. Yeah. So it's nothing to do with your code. Those data we keep because we use it to analyze and improve the product. But your code, once we get suggestion, that's it, it's gone. Okay. That's so that's a very common question. Will my code go into yeah, everyone? Like, no. 
No. Do you have any data on how many people accept and decline to request? 35, 35 or 37%? Except. I don't remember, except the suggestion. Um, the okay. interesting part is that's globally, for enterprises, it's lower. And we have a hypothesis that the global number is driven by students. Yeah, so is that increasing or declining over time? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I would, I would just be interested to see if it's the statistics get better or worse. So. Uh, suggestions will get better with context provided. Suggestions will not, um, and it's also, there is also this thing what's called tokens. How many tokens we send to the model, yeah. like which contain your context. Obviously, the more we send, the more context the model will have to generate suggestion, but the more we send, the more expensive expensive it is to generate the suggestion. Like currently what you're paying 10 bucks, it's nothing compared with the cost of hosting this. People don't, and some people come and say, companies come and say, well, I'm cautious about my code. Can I host it myself? My answer is yes. Is your name Google, Amazon, Microsoft? Oh, sorry. Only those three, because only those three companies have enough resources to host that. People don't understand how huge infrastructure for that is. So the $10 you're paying for that, I my gut feel is we probably losing money on that. My gut feel. Um, I don't know exactly, but that's my gut feel that as a company we're probably losing money on Copilot. Um, so yes, we can grab more tokens. We actually bumped it up. We had something like 4,000 tokens being sent. We increased it to 8,000, but then we realized, oops, it cost too much. and it, for the cost, it doesn't provide as much benefits. We dropped it. And also, the more you send, the more latency you will get as well. So we're always looking at what's... It's a very fine game to give you the best experience. Yes? There is a chat GPT feature called temperature. And if you adjust it, it gives you a more randomized answer. Yes. Does it exist here too? Yes, not meant to be fiddled with, but yes. <laughs> there is it's in in the settings of your IDE you can modify it, but I tell customers use it at your own risk. It's not it was not designed to, uh, to be tempered with. But if you know what you are doing, go okay. fiddle with it. Not a problem. Yeah, I'm uh, hoping if uh, a competitor enters the OpenAI that's model upgrade. It's not on schedule. Um, it, it, we do update it. So for example, we updated it, I think in May. Um, and before that, I think in February or January. But it's not guaranteed, it's not on schedule. Okay. Again, we always, uh, that this product is probably the hottest, if you want to be the coolest developer in GitHub, you should be on this team. Because it's constantly new features, new adjustments and new, play experiments. So what the team is always doing is, okay, can we use, will we get a lot more if we switch to 